Hello everyone, welcome to 10 Minute Physiology. In today's video, I'm going to give you a short explanation as to what Gibbs Donnan equilibrium is. So with that, let's give it a go. So we have to start off by first describing to you our experimental setup. So in our experiment today, we have a container. And this container has rigid walls, and this means that the container is going to have a constant volume throughout the entire experiment. Now this container has two compartments. This compartment, which we'll call the inside, and this compartment, which we'll call the outside. And separating these two compartments is a semi-permeable membrane. Now, this container is going to be filled with a solution, and this solution is going to contain water and three different solutes. So let's take a closer look at how this experiment is going to start off. So once again, we have two different compartments. The first is the inside, which we'll just call the inside, and the second is the outside. And what we see here are that we have three different solutes. So the first thing that you should notice is that the sodium concentration outside is equal to the sodium concentration inside. The next thing that we should notice is that the chloride concentration outside is 150 millimolar, and the chloride concentration inside is zero millimolar. And then the last one is protein. So we have zero protein outside and one millimolar worth of protein inside, or 150 milli equivalents. And we'll talk about what that means in a little bit. So in order to understand gibbs donnan equilibrium, we have to understand the law of electroneutrality. So the law of electroneutrality basically states that the net electrical charge of any solution is going to always be zero. And what we see here in these two compartments is that this is the case. So on the outside solution, what we see is that we have 150 millimolar worth of sodium and 150 millimolar worth of chloride. So we can look at these two things as positive and negative charge. So sodium has one positive charge and chloride has one negative. And we have 150 millimolar worth of sodium 150 millimolar worth of chloride. Therefore, the concentration of positive charge is equal to the concentration of negative charge. Therefore, the net charge of the whole solution is zero. So on the inside, we also have 150 millimolar worth of positive charge, but in this case, we have protein. So remember that proteins can actually be very large and can have many different molecules attached to them. So therefore, even though we only have one millimolar worth of protein, this particular protein has 150 negative charges attached to it. So therefore, it's 150 milliequivalents. So therefore, we have 150 negative charges, 150 positive charges, so therefore the net charge is zero. So now if we were to start this experiment, what will we see? So the first thing that we have to remember is that the chloride concentration is greater on the outside than it is on the inside. So if we were to start this experiment and allow this container to go to equilibrium, the chloride would move from the outside to the inside following its electrochemical gradient. Now when chloride does this, it produces a negative membrane potential. Now, because of this negative membrane potential, this is going to draw sodium from the outside and move it towards the inside. So after a certain period of time, it's going to reach an intermediate state. So an intermediate state means that the container is not yet at equilibrium, but it's on its way there. So if we were to pause the container at a certain point in time, what we would maybe see is something like this. But the main thing that we should know here is that this system is not in equilibrium yet. And what we see here is that the inside has a negative membrane potential and the outside has a positive membrane potential. So since it's not in equilibrium yet, both sodium and chloride are still going to move across the semi-permeable membrane. But when will the movement stop? So in order to understand this, we have to now bring in gibbs donnan equilibrium. So in order to understand what that is, we have to bring in two equations. And this is going to be the Nernst equation for both sodium and chloride. So this is the Nernst equation for sodium and the Nernst equation for chloride. 
And at equilibrium, both of these two equations will be equal to each other. So therefore, we can set them equal to each other. So at equilibrium, since both of these things are equal, we can set them equal to each other. So the next step will be to do some basic algebra and to cancel out common factors. And when we do that, we can cancel out these constants, and it gives us this equation. So the next step is to simplify the equation even more. And we can use our law of logarithms in order to simplify this equation into this equation. And then we can cancel out more common factors, giving us this equation. So this equation here is the gibbs donnan equilibrium equation for our container. So what we see here is this value, or r, and r is also called the Donnan ratio. So when this ratio of sodium outside to sodium inside is equal to chloride inside to chloride outside, when these two ratios are equal to each other, the system is said to be in gibbs donnan equilibrium. And when it reaches gibbs donnan equilibrium, there is no more net movement of sodium or chloride. So if we go back to our intermediate state and put these values into the equation, what we will see here is that the ratios are not equal, and it's because of this fact that both sodium and chloride will keep moving into the inside compartment. So if we were to continue on with this experiment, what we would see is that chloride would continue moving into the inside, and sodium will continue to move to the inside. And after a certain period of time, the container will have reached gibbs donnan equilibrium. And these are the concentrations at which it would have achieved this. And we can see this by plugging this into the equation. And what we see here is that the two ratios are equal, 0.5 and 0.5. So it's at these particular concentrations that chloride and sodium will stop having a net movement into the inside. Now, the important thing to realize here is that when we reached gibbs donnan equilibrium, we did not have equal total concentrations. So if we were to add this concentration of sodium to the concentration of chloride, what we would see is that the total concentration outside is 200, and the total concentration inside is 251. So as a result of this, the osmotic pressure inside is greater than the osmotic pressure outside. And remember that water is going to move from lower osmotic pressure to higher osmotic pressure, or from an area of low solute concentration to an area of high solute concentration. So what we would see here is that the osmotic pressure difference is going to drive water movement from here to here. The important thing to remember is that the container is rigid. So the container walls are rigid, therefore the volume of the container cannot change. And since the container is rigid, water entering into the inside increases the hydrostatic pressure on the inside. So as a result of this, hydrostatic pressure is generated, which opposes the movement of water inside the cell. So this hydrostatic pressure opposes the osmotic pressure. So the hydrostatic pressure inside surpasses the hydrostatic pressure outside. And this is possible due to the fact that the wall is rigid. Since the wall is rigid, it's able to generate a hydrostatic pressure gradient, and it's able to oppose the movement of water from one side to the other. So what would happen if this were in a cell in the body? So we were talking about a rigid container, but cells are not rigid. Cells are actually very malleable. And because of this, the cells are not able to generate a hydrostatic gradient. So in other words, the difference between the hydrostatic pressure inside and outside the cell is always going to be zero. So as a result of this, because it can't generate a hydrostatic pressure gradient, what is going to happen to the cell? Well, if this were to happen to the cell, if we were to allow gibbs donnan equilibrium to take over, the cell would actually expand until it burst. So the cells would burst. 
So the cell has to have a specific mechanism to counteract Donnan equilibrium. And this is going to be achieved through the sodium potassium pump. And we'll see how this occurs in the next video. So I hope to see you in the next video and I thank you for watching this one. I hope this helped you understand and I hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching and see you next time.